Well, greetings to you once again, my brothers and my sisters in Christ Jesus. I greet you in that name that is above every other name, at the name of Jesus Christ. Every knee bows, every tongue confesses, because he, Jesus Christ, is Lord. Um, yes, faithmix.com, main site, and we are playing around with Spreaker a little bit, um, this different platform. And uh, yeah, so it's going to take a little bit of time to get uh, some things acclimated, but I think this is going to be a good way to be able to streamline things um, for everybody that's kind of involved. And um, yeah, we there's a lot, a lot, a lot going on right now all over the world. So um, doing things more efficiently, doing things in a uh, more effective way, being able to communicate with each other um, on the fly as we need to. Uh, this is going to all be part and parcel of, of going forward because, you know, sometimes we get into uh, old ways of doing things and into habits because they're comfortable. But um, if you're willing to try something different, if you're willing to try something new, if you're willing to challenge yourself, you can always expand out a little bit. You can always do things a little bit differently. And you can improve. You know, sometimes we we get into a particular way of doing something and we, as human beings, <clears throat> in our human nature, become very resistant to change. <laughs> Scripture talked about how, you know, the old wineskins and the new wineskins and, and nobody wants the old wine uh, or nobody wants the new wine because they think the old was better. And, and um Actually, before the Mandela effect, it said wineskins. Now it says bottles. <laughs> so, so yeah, so as, as uh, space-time is beginning to come apart, as things are beginning to fluctuate because, uh, you know, the very base reality that everybody got so comfortable in is beginning to now, um, you're beginning to see holes in that reality. There's, there's, uh, there's the fundamental questioning even arising in people's minds of what this is and you know here's a few things we we're here for a window we're here for a season we come into this life and then we're here and then you know those that have come into this world that were here before are not here anymore so not a soul has come into this world that stays in this world every soul comes through and transitions through and, um, you know, the Son of God was manifest in the flesh, came, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, so we have that. And uh, But He came in and, you know, went away. He says, it's better for you that I go away, because once I go away, I will send the Holy Spirit, and He'll be with you, and He'll be in you, and, and the Spirit will... So so we've seen that, we, we, we know that, we understand that. And for us, we also know and understand <clears throat> that we too are here for a window, we too are here for a season, and we too are here engaged in the things that the Father would have us to be engaged with. Now, what what the world would want to do is to keep you from connecting up with God's plan and purpose for you. And if it can't keep you from that, if you do connect up, if you do, if if Christ in you, the hope of glory gets unlocked then the world is going to do everything that it can to marginalize you, to, to degrade you, to discredit you, to, um, to put you in a difficult position, in a difficult place, so that you can't move forward in the gifts that God has put in you because you're dangerous to them, you're dangerous to their system if you move forward in what God has put in you to be and to do. So... Um, this is part of where persistence comes into play. This is part of where an attitude shift and an attitude change in the child of God is necessary. Because this is where you have to consider it pure joy when you face trials and tribulations of all kind because you know that the testing of your faith builds perseverance. Perseverance builds character. Character builds hope. And that hope does not disappoint. You have to have a shift inside of you and you have to let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. That has to be there. So that you're able to um, to overcome that challenge that the world will throw at you, which is to destroy the works of your hands, 
to destroy the mind that you have, to destroy the health that's in your body, to destroy the very foundation of your being because the world doesn't want you to move forward in what God has put in you in the first place. So, you know, you've got to have a, a, a foundational shift within you. And, and that comes from the work of the Holy Spirit in you as you yield to that work. So the fastest way to do this, the fastest way to do this is to just surrender yourself 100% to God from the very start. So you don't um, couch it at all. You don't try to go one foot in and one foot out with the kingdom. Basically, when Christ Jesus uh, reaches out to you and calls you unto himself, when God reveals, just like he did with Peter, and when Jesus said, well, who do you say that I am? He says, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Well, when God reveals to you, just as he did unto Peter, who he is, then you go all in. Um, and you go, you go completely and one hundred percent with him, with no limitation, no holes barred. You don't um, restrict, and you don't hold back. And that's very important because when you do that, now you're 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 going without one foot on the brake. You know, you've got a lot of people, a lot of people that would call themselves Christians. Uh, are you know one foot's on the gas and one foot's on the brake and they push them both at the same time and they wonder why they have trouble going down the road. You know you you want to be all in with Christ and when you're all in with Him then it will it will strengthen you and it will also quicken the process because there is a process that God does with His people. You know, you've got to understand that you got to respect His process and His way. Um, because he he is preparing you so that you can be meet for the master's use, so that you can be uh, prepared and ready, and that there can be that time of your showing. There can be that time where he now can can use you, and it, overtly because he's got to do some work in you. You know, like so, there's a lot of times where if if God would have blessed the work of certain people's hands along the way that were truly his. He would have blessed a mess. He would have uh, increased um, a, a huge problem and a huge issue. So you don't. He doesn't want that. You don't want that because you actually end up undoing yourself. You know, there's there's um, there's friends that have had in in my past that have had um, you know been been in certain situations where they've had access to tremendous massive resources, and uh, but. If they were not prepared for that in advance, a lot of them destroy themselves. They get just enough rope to hang themselves. They get just enough resource to completely destroy themselves because they didn't have a foundation. They didn't have a, a guiding set of principles by which they would live. They didn't make the right choices and the right decisions in those situations because they hadn't allowed that to be grounded into the foundation of their character so that when they went forward that they were prepared and ready. So, you know, don't despise the process that God puts you through. In all situations, you learn, you learn, you get discipline, and then it's like, okay, that's the way that God does this. So that's the way. So I need to trust Him. I need to to come back to Him with this. I need to... Now, when when something's going on, absolutely pray about it. You know, we, we, we do take... Our, our struggles, our hurts, our cares, our worries, our concerns, all before the living God. We do that. But at the same time, you also need to keep the right perspective. And you still, just like with Jesus in the garden, there's a great example of it. Garden of Gethsemane. Lord, if it be possible, take this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thy, but thy, not my will, but thine be done. You know, so even in the depth of despair, knowing what the horror of the cross was, and what was on the horizon waiting for him just that next day, you know, Jesus Christ, um, he, he knew what was coming, and yet he went forward into it, but at the same time, uh, he still shared his struggle with the Father, and he didn't couch it, he didn't uh, restrain from it, you know, so, so, but you can, you can share and you can, you can, you can bear out your heart before the Lord, but at the same time, whatever His will is, that's what you're going to do. So that's important. You know, it's important to to go forward like that.
because that's going to be the place of your peace. That's going to be the place of your rest. And that's going to be the quickest way to go into and to not waste your window while you're here in this life. Because a lot of people waste away their time and their window while they're here in this life. You know, that, that's something that you don't want to do. You don't want to waste your time and your window while you're here in this life. Because um, the time that you're here is, you know, the devil wants to waste that. He wants to get you caught up in all the things that are apart from God. What did, what did God say? He said, apart from me, you can do nothing. Jesus said that, you know, you want to remain in him and his words remain in you. So that is what God wants from you. <clears throat> and he wants, just like Jesus said, I only do the things I see the Father doing. Uh, you know, he wants that from you. You know, he wants you to live in that state. So if you're going to be able to live in that state and you're going to be able to do that, you want to be able to, um, you want to be able to, to move in a particular state of being in a particular connection. But the world is always going to work to take you away from that and to keep you out of that because then your time is frettered away. Your, your, your energy here is frettered away. I mean, even the concept of time is, is now becoming um, obsolete you know, as, as people begin to understand more and more about this uh, reality, this paradigm that they're in, this quote-unquote universe that they're in, they're starting to understand that <clears throat> even the concept of time in and of itself is now become, is coming into question. You know, so all of that is, is, is um, part of the unveiling, part of the, you know, I mean, okay, think about it. Where do we get the idea and the concept of time? Well, we got that from um, just the fact that, you know, there are some cycles in nature and uh, we see that everything wears down because of entropy, that things wear down, that life comes and, and then it goes. And so it's sort of like, okay, there seems to be this beginning and this end. And um, so we've created, the entire system of the world has also been created with, um, you know, and, and tagged to time. But God is I am. You know, he was and is and is to come. You know, but he is I am. He is what was, what is, what is to come, but he is, ultimately, he is I am. You know, the error that people make is to think that he is something over there, or he is something for the future, or he's something in the past, or he's, but, you know, he is the God of the living. So people make that mistake. They make that mistake of not understanding the reality of their experience, even here, that all is eternal. And even for the transition, so say you transition out of this paradigm, but you'll immediately transition into the next paradigm. And all that is real will continue on with you. So this here is just a window and a season for a reason and a purpose, which you want to complete, but you will you will miss it and you'll miss the reasons and the purposes for which you're here if you are wrapped up in the traps of the enemy. So you want to be, be mindful. You want to be mindful that the enemy is there working to trap you, to enslave you, to trick you, to enslave you to and to lock you down into a uh, something else and you know jesus talked about the in the parable of the sower it's the worries the riches and the pleasures of this world that choke it and make it unfruitful choke the word out that that word which is life that christ in you that comes and grows and fills your entire being it, it works to choke that out it works to to try to put you in a position where you have two masters and god said either you can't serve two masters either you'll You'll serve the one and you'll, 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 you'll either love one and hate the other. You serve one and despise the other. You can't serve both God and mammon. So what the world wants to do is it wants to try to get you in that compromised situation, compromised place where you're paralyzed. You can't make a move. You can't make a decision. You don't have the uh, structure. You don't have the backing. You don't have the courage of your convictions. You don't have the moral high ground because you've, you've been so compromised with them and in them that you, you can't make a decision. Listen, if you're in a position right now where you feel you feel that and you feel like you can't, the place you go is repentance. The place you go is you just repent before God 
and you say, Lord God, forgive me. You know, and you go through that process and let him restore you. And in that, he may have some things for you to do, very likely. Do them. And then once you've done them, go and keep going and don't look back. Because, you know, to look back is to join Lot's wife. I mean, there's nothing for you in the world. There's nothing for you in the world system. There's nothing for you there. Now, you know, we're in the world, we're not of the world. We're surrounded by them. They're constantly trying to get your attention. They're constantly, you know, pining for your mind space. But don't go there. You know, just you keep going with what God gives you to do. You keep doing what the Father has told you. You keep um, moving on in that which is real and that which is true. And let the rest be what it is. Now, God has things for us to do. And in this time... um, (laughs) in this amazing time that we're living in right now, the things that God will have for you to do are, um, you know, they're, they're, don't underestimate the significance of the thing that you do and the obedience in the work that God gives you to do. Because sometimes, you know, it might seem like a seemingly small thing in your own mind, But you don't know how big or how important that is to the larger picture. I I, I mean, I've seen even in my own life, you know, times where God will have had me do something that, you know, might seem insignificant. But later on, if when I've had the chance or somebody's given me some feedback on something and realized how significant it was for that situation or that person or that that whatever it may be. So the key is you just want to do it. You just want to respond. So when God quickens you, you respond. When God gives you something to do, you respond. You know, and, and let him lead and guide it. You, you remove ego from it. It's not about us. It's about him. You know, Christ in you is the hope of glory. Not you and not me, but Christ in you is the hope of glory. You want to move forward in that. And in that place, that's where you're going to see victory. That's where you're going to see um uh, you're going to see, it's going to be a lot of fun. Listen, the walk in Christ is not boring. It is never boring. Okay, we we do not live dull, mechanical, um, boring lives. We live incredible, incredible, fulfilled lives. And God wants that for his people. You know, there's, there's nothing the world has that could ever come close to the fulfilled life that a child of the living God has. You know, we live a life of purpose and meaning, and you want to do that. You, you, that's what you're craving for. That's what the world is actually craving for, but they can't find it because they're looking in the wrong place. You know, there's, they, there is no fulfillment and meaning in their world. So there's, there's, in their world, there's, you know, the best they can hope for is luxury and times of happiness, which they pay for just to block out everything else that they've had to do to get to that moment. And uh, they just try to keep the party going. But eventually, it all comes collapsing down. But for the child of God, no, you live a life of fulfillment and purpose and reason for being. And we make incredible strides and incredible impacts on the world that we live in. And now is a time of no exception to that. Now is actually a time where it is kicking into full gear. So we pray, we read, we do, we you know, God quickens you fast, um, which is just, oh, here's something about fasting too. When you do it, um, do it the way that God shows you to do it. And, um, you know, it's not this big production or anything like that. All that it is, <clears throat> and from what I, I've seen in my own experience, it's, it's basically just you kind of putting aside the the flesh in some way, shape, or form, you know, however it, the, the fast may be that you do, so that you can be more attuned in the realm of the spirit and so there's just it's just it's just a fine tuning you know it's just bringing your 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 body a bit more under subjection so that your spirit can be quickened and tuned and that you can move forward in something so there's times where you know god where where he will quicken you to fast because you know he's showing you some other things or working some other things out with you and in you. So when you fast, when you pray, when you do these things, when you read, 
when you respond, you're going to see the hand and the manifestation of God in you. And when when you don't do those things, then you're not going to see it. You know, it has nothing to do with the fact that that you know that it's nothing more than that. You you just won't see because success is in the obedience. You'll see the victory and the power of God in the obedience and walking things out. I mean, we've seen that with uh, the human 2020. We've seen that with, um, you know, a lot of other things that we've all been involved with and engaged with. So you'll see that. So you want to, you, you just want to, once you understand, you want to keep going. All right. So um, just a quick word as we're continuing to, to get into all of this. But hey, we love you guys. God bless you. Drop us an email, faithmix at gmail.com and say hi. We'll talk to you again sometime soon. All right. God bless you. Bye.